All right, guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So uh, we're back with Adam here. What are we talking about today? So today we're talking about the uh, last about. video we put out where you're talking about uh, some old people self-defense, senior uh, people self-defense. Yeah. And, and uh, a few questions came out of that. So let's start with the first one. What sure. style was that? Well, I think I mentioned a bit in the clip. It wasn't any particular style. Um, I just basically translated into hand movements to the stick. Uh, some of it was from Xing Yi, some of it was from Karate, some of it was from Wing Chun, right? Sometimes if you train a lot with empty hands, when you pick up a weapon, you can just use it. I think I talked a little bit about that in a previous episode. Maybe you can put a link to that episode where I was talking about uh, weapons, yeah. yeah okay. So, so, so uh, oh, I guess... Yeah. That's oh, yeah, there was a movement from Kali, too. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of people recognize that as Kali, a lot of the movements. So should they learn Kali to do that stuff? Let me answer that in two ways. Well, for, it's not Kali. And it's kind of like, you know, nowadays when people see a guy moving with a stick automatically, they think it's Filipino martial arts, right? Um, or if they see someone moving their hand fast automatically, they think it's Wing Chun. Or if the guy's moving slow, then it must be Tai Chi. But no, just many styles on the planet use the sticks, right? So no, it wasn't Kali. Um, but should you learn Kali? Your second question. Yes, I think so. I think Kali is an awesome system. Um, one of the systems that I respect the most at Filipino martial arts, more importantly, I respect the culture. Because it's still pretty young in terms of when it got ex exported. So it's still not douchey. It's still got its tribal roots. It's about protecting your land, protecting your family, protecting yourself. Sacrificing yourself if you have to. Taking out the enemy to protect and save life. So it doesn't have that social violent douchey thing yet. So it's, it teaches honor so and loyalty. So it's good. Also, it has longevity, the Filipino martial art. It's not uncommon to see excrementors, volunteer their 70s that can move well and still do the drills. Unlike a lot of martial art, they're not career based. Like, hey, here's your career, now you gotta quit, like hockey or something. But no, it was designed to be longevity because it was designed to protect your tribe. You're never too old to pick up something and go, I gotta protect my family. Like that, you never call quits on that, right? So it was designed with longevity in mind and also, very smart way because of longevity and other reasons they do a lot of flow drills and it's proven in science the quickest and longest way to learn longest in terms of retainability but quickest way to learn is through play and because of their dance culture and also the way it was designed filipino martial art has a lot of play which is good because now you're gonna get PTSD when you're training, especially with weapons, and it doesn't damage your joints, and the weapons take impact for you, right? And it's very adaptable. You can use any object, good extreme doors anyway. So well, I can go on, but those are some of the reasons why I feel people should do Kali, right? But unfortunately, sometimes it do get popular in certain parts. So your chances, once an art is popular, it's hard to find a good teacher, right? So you gotta really take the time to find a good teacher if you're gonna learn it. I really recommend Filipino martial arts. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a specialist in it. I keep saying that and I keep getting emails about it. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to the next question, which is a yep. bit more. Uh, well, so you got some comments on the last video that said that uh, What's going on? people can't do what you showed. People can't do oh, what you showed. Oh, that's not an old people type of stuff. I don't know, people kind of stuff. So, uh, what do you mean by we, that? Why don't we expand a little bit? What you did in the last video, yeah. right? all the movements, they were mm -hmm. fast, they were precise. Old guys can do it. They can't do it. They can't do it. That, that's, those are the comments. It's like, yeah. you know, they, they have to be ninjas. I'm laughing because it's, a, it's like a blanket statement again, right? So my, my reply is what I usually say is 100% true. But it's also 100% not true. Who are we talking about? And you said the word old. Who are you talking about, right? But to respond to the first thing, I was going too fast. Um, I said this before. I'm not that fast. And I wasn't moving fast. I'm usually talking as I'm moving, right? I think it's just the nature of the stick that makes me look fast. So, But I apologize. I will try to slow down more. Okay, on to the second thing. Old guys can't do what I did. It's not important to do what I did. It's just important to be able to do the stuff. If you do the stuff, you'll look different. Everybody will look different. But on to why old people can't do it. It's a blanket statement. Uh, let's say there's four profiles of old people, right? You got the masters. You got the guy that 
does it, he's not a master, but he does it as a lifestyle. You know, he does it two times a week, three times a week. He's actually interested in it. And I'm, these are all old profiles. Third guy is he hates training. Doesn't want to do it at all. Maybe he just wants to learn a few tricks. Maybe go through, take a workshop. He's not going to train consistently. He's looking for the magic pill kind of thing, like a like a take a first aid course every five years kind of thing, right? And then you get the fourth guy. Okay, his health is degenerating. You know, he can barely hold a coffee cup, right? He can't walk. He, you know, unfortunately, is in major pain. He can't even do basic function. He doesn't have a baseline of strength to rely on anymore. So when you say old, and old people cannot do the very basic martial art that I did in the last clip. Which old guy are you talking about, right? Like when I was learning with Jesse, he was 60-something. And then before he passed, he was 70 some. He had no problem being the crap out of younger people, even when they're trying their best to get him. A lot of them are experienced martial artists. A lot of them are experienced fighters. He even had pro fighters. It doesn't matter. When I was training with Ed, Ed was um, 70s at the time. Ed had no problem beating up people, let alone giving him a stick, right? Um, when I met Grandmaster Wong Chung Lung, he was an older fella. I, uh, he, he was a force to reckon with, right? I met the uh, rest in peace Grandmaster Dave Harris. I only met him one day, but he was the closest thing I ever met to a magician. Um, one of my good friends, not old, but he's almost 60, St St Steve Smith. Yeah, you don't want to mess with a guy like that. <laughs> so I can go on and on. I met a lot of older masters that... You know, it's unfortunate, especially like in our culture, we, we tend to worship the young and we tend to put old people in the useless box in all facets of life. But martial art can open a door to a different way, not by idealistic thinking or philosophical thinking or even cultural conditioning, but looking at the fact, like I did when I met these older masters, they, they were amazing. They can totally defend themselves against an average person. So if you look at the first profile, Old people can definitely do what I did and 10 times more, 100 times more. They're way more skilled than me, way more attributes to me, even under older years, even if someone was trying, even if that person is younger. And I know that from direct experience. Second profile, this guy want to do it as a lifestyle. He's not a martial art master. Maybe he's just retired. He's taking a martial art lesson. But this guy's dedicated, you know. And I have a lot of emails like that where people are on our website, for example, and I'm very proud of them. They're older gentlemen, they had a past martial art background. Maybe they didn't, some of them didn't, but they do it as a lifestyle and they're training all the time. And it's very inspiring to me to watch them do that. This guy has a functional baseline of strength to um, rely on. And there's a couple of fellas in my gym that I met, gentlemen who's within their mid sixties and they can lift more weights than most young guys in terms of the three big lifts like bench press, uh, deadlift, you know, squat, I see them with very heavy weight. And they're not professionals. They're just guys that work at it because it's their lifestyle. They like it. If you take a guy that ripped that strong or even half his strength and you give him a stick and go hit that guy in the head with it, why well, would we have a problem with being able to make it work? And his cognitive ability is 100% intact. It's a lot smarter than me because I talked to him all the time in the gym, this older fellow, right? It's easy for him to hit people in the head and remember left, right, up, down. So of course he can. So second profile, no problem. Third profile, this guy only wants, he doesn't like training at all, but he's an older fellow, maybe he got mugged before, whatever, and he just wants to take a workshop, learn a few tricks, but he only wants to train once, maybe one day his entire life, and then never do it again. Of course that guy can't protect himself. How can you possibly just train one day and be able to protect yourself, right? There's no magic pill, right? And a fourth guy, I, I think, I presume that's the guy they were talking about. This guy doesn't even have a baseline of strength, he's extremely sick. Um, he can't function physically or, or maybe even mentally. Of course he can't protect himself. He can't even do very basic thing like maybe getting to the bathroom, right? Maybe walking down the street. So, yeah. So when you say old people cannot do what I did, that is 100% true, but 100%, 1,000% false, right? Which old guy are you talking about, right? And again, the only reason why I'm responding in the way I am is because I'm kind of sick of this culture where they worship the young and push aside the old like they're useless, right? I don't, I don't, I'm not saying the commenters are saying that, but I definitely get that when I look around everywhere, but that's not true, right? Just because you're old doesn't mean you're useless or you can't do this or can't do that. If anything, they can do more. When I say that I met this old guy in the gym lifting weights and he was lifting heavy weight, I don't mean he's good for his age. I mean he lifts more than most young guys I look around, objectively. 
It's the same as when people say, oh, he's good with his pound for pound, he's good for his size, that kind of thing. No, that doesn't mean anything to me. Objectively, is he better? Not for his size, for his weight class, for his age. That, that only matters if you're competing, which I respect. But when you're talking about self-defense, there's no weight class. There's no age. It's all objective. Can you win or can you lose? An example that I gave in that clip was that older lady. She was either in her mid-70s or in her 80s. She got attacked by a male that was in his 30s, average size. So let's say 170 to 190 pounds, between 5'10 and 6 feet tall. She was maybe a 4 feet, almost 5 feet tall Asian lady that was 80 pounds. No training. She took a stick and beat the guy to the point where the guy ended up on a stretcher. So how can it not work? That was a case in point, right? Because it's a stick in the head. So, so anyways. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, yeah. because you move so fast, uh, you know, yeah. that threw, uh, threw out some confusion about that. So. Yeah, I should have slowed down more, but um, I met older guys faster than me. I mean, when Jesse moved on me, bang, I didn't even see it. It was like a blink of bang, 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 I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> right? But again, it depends on which profile you're talking about, right? But it doesn't matter. What matters is the bad guy's on the ground and the good guy gets to go home to his family. Can an older person do that? Again, depending on which old guy you're talking about, right? If you have taken responsibility for your life, you eat well, you're taking care of your health, barring really bad diseases and natural inc like accidents. And you're There's no excuse. <laughs> well, not excuse, but you're functional. You have a baseline of strength. You have good cognitive ability. Why can't you defend yourself against someone younger? So when I hear that, it, it makes me feel bad. That's why I'm from the last clip. Because when I read these emails, sometimes I see these old gentlemen uh, email me. I can tell they have no confidence and that bother me, right? Because I'm not saying you'll win for sure. I'm saying there's a chance. Give yourself the chance. On a side note, your chances of being attacked in the country that we live in, what, less than 1%? So don't get paranoid. You don't have to learn self-defense. But if you take the time to message me and ask me for advice, then my advice is, hey, you do have a chance to defend yourself. What should I do? Well, I know that you're walking with a cane. My squad will learn how to use it. That's all I'm saying. Right? Yeah. What else? Okay. Right on. Last thing. Mm -hmm. Talked about uh, circles a lot. Yeah. Can you explain a bit what you mean by uh, incorporating circles into your training? Yeah, on purpose, I, I uh, decided to do it with a stick last time because a stick amplifies motion. Obviously, when you swing a stick, you can see curves and you can see circle. And... Um, before I go on, when I say circles, I, I usually choose the wrong word. Curves, curves may be a better word, spirals. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. So any curve type of um, motion will reduce inertia and it will in, increase velocity and therefore power, right? It gives you better recovery because one motion links to another. It saves your joints and allows you to retain effortless power. Like for example, um, if you took a stick, Put a, put a rope, put a hammer at the end, you swing and you hit a guy. Even with no training, it's going to hurt a lot, right? So, because that's natural momentum, right? So you can learn that in martial arts. And I like to amplify it with a weapon, right? And that really helps older people. But as you progress, you should be able to hide these circles so it's not so obvious. Especially if you're older, because the bigger your circle, the more telegraphed it is, the slower it is, the easier it is for someone to counter. And especially if you're older, if you're already slower or out of shape or injured or whatever, right? So, for example, um, let's say you do a bomb cell. When you do a bomb cell, there's a circle right there. See? Roll over. When you do a Wu cell, a lot of people will turn it like this. So, there's already a circle here. So, you got two circles here. When you turn your body, there's already a circle here. So now you got three circles, let's say, and your legs are drilling too, right? But you can kind of add more circles because this usually, a lot of Wing Chun people, they probably won't say it publicly, but they have really bad shoulders from doing decades of Wing Chun because your shoulder rotator cuff was not meant to be growing like that. It injures you, so then you can lower it. But let's say you keep the same circle this way, right? So you got a circle here, you got a circle here, and you got a circle here with this hand. Three circle, but you can add a circle. You see how my elbow goes from here to here? There's a circle here, if you can look at it. So you can actually link your ribs to it. Now you add another circle, so now there's a bounce, right? There's also a circle cutting this way. If you look at it from the top view, now you can add a cut with this pinky, cutting this way. So I just added two extra circle. Now your lower back, you can curve like this. So am I modifying Wing Chun? Maybe, maybe not. 
but you see a lot of older masters do it. I can go on and on and add 10 more circles to it, but you, you see my point, right? By doing these things, you'll last a lot longer. You'll hurt a lot less. You get more power, more speed, better recovery, less telegraphic ability, less inertia between your combinations. A lot of the time when people say I'm fast, it's only because I'm using a circle. I'm talking to you as I'm moving. I'm not even moving fast, but it looks fast to them, right? So if you can seem fast to someone when you're not trying, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything except for you're adding more circles. <laughs> you're cheating, right? So, yeah. Anything else, Chris? No, no that's all. It's cool, man. All right. So if you're interested in our work, including circles that I put in my wing chain, please go to adamshankungfu.com. You get any questions, leave a comment below. Don't be shy. And I didn't want to offend anybody, right? I'm just having a discussion with you. So I noticed that sometimes when I respond to some of you, We'll be like, okay, I better not say anything else. That's not what I mean by it. I'm not trying to say I'm right. I'm just opening up a discussion. So, um, all right, train hard, stay safe.